This week on Retro Break, I'm taking a look at 11 brand new and upcoming games for everyone's favourite grey brick, the original Game Boy. There's so much really cool stuff here. I've got a few games that have been sent over to me. I've got a few that I purchased myself, some off Kickstarter, one that even comes in a really cool little cassette tape as well, and a few download titles and a few early previews. There's so much to get into in this video. Let's get started. So let's choose a nice and simple one to start this video off. This is called Flutter by Ferrante Crafts and it is a really simple, almost casual app style game where you basically have to fill the entire screen with one colour. You get to choose from a selection of different colours down the side of the screen and when you click that colour anything surrounding it of that colour will fill in and you just have to keep doing that until you get to the end of the stage. There's a limited amount of moves that you're allowed to make and it sounds really easy but it's actually a lot more difficult than it sounds to actually be able to fill in the entire grid. I've only actually managed to do it once and not while I was recording unfortunately. So if you're interested in a really simple but fun puzzle game with really nice presentations presentation and of course it takes full advantage of the Game Boy Color as well, then definitely check out Flutter. You can go and order it over on their website. I will have links in the description to all of the games, whether they're out now or whether they're coming soon, down below. So definitely go and check them out after this video. And now let's take a look at the second game, which is called Pine Creek, which came from Incube 8. And I'm only going to do a really little preview of it in this video because I'm going to do a full review in the future, but they actually sent me this quite a while ago now and I haven't had a chance to get around to talking about it until now so here's a little preview of the game and considering this was one of the first games that came out in Game Boy Studio when they introduced the color element it really does look very well polished and I really can't wait to get more into it I've only managed to play it for about 10 minutes so far but from what I've played it seems like a really interesting mysterious story and it seems really well written as well so really can't wait to experience some more of Pine Creek and and definitely subscribe because you don't want to miss the review of this one coming very soon. Now the third game in a box here and I got this one from Community Releases which is a forum over in Germany which gathers a group of people together and then you can all donate in order to get these games made into real physical versions. And the one I'm holding here is a game by user 0x7f who is a great member of the Game Boy Homebrew community and I was super excited to get this game because I've been looking at it for a long time. This is called Black Castle and it's definitely one of the best homebrew games that I've played on the system so far. It's a really polished action platform of the system, kind of like a more action focused Castlevania game. It has really good controls, it has a selection of different power-ups and a really nice simple and fast level progression system as well. I haven't managed to beat the game just yet, I've managed to get up to the end of World 4 and then the damn boss at the end of that level always kills me every single time and I've got there about five times now but maybe after this video I'll go back and give it another shot and perhaps in the future I'll do a full review of the game as well because it did come in this really nice collector's package as well and Community Releases DE is something Something that I think more people should know about because it's done kind of underground but they've actually done some great releases so far and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with next. So that was it for the three main boxed releases and now this next one is called Oni or Oni and this is a really interesting package for this one. This one actually came in a cassette tape here in the games right there and this one is from a guy called Pierre Joshua and I've actually completed this game and I'm in the process of writing a script for a full review right now but I just wanted to to highlight it in this video because I was really really surprised at the quality of this game. I went into it expecting just another simple Game Boy Studio game with maybe a fun little storyline but nothing much more but what I actually got in the end was a big sprawling Zelda style adventure with a really really great progression system. There's loads of different weapons and items that you can pick up in this game and that allows you to access new locations and solve different puzzles and it was just a lot better than I was expecting. In. So have a look at the gameplay over this and once again look forward to my full video review coming very soon. And now for a few more quirky physical games that I've got here. The first one is a really cool little puzzle game called Color Lines DX. 
which was actually also released by Ferrante Crafts, but this one is cart only. And this is a really interesting concept for a puzzle game. I've never really played anything like it before, so I don't know whether it's a spin-off of a game that maybe came out on PC back in the early 90s maybe, but what is here is really interesting. You basically move the shapes around once they've filled in, and then every time you move one to a new location, another few start appearing in the background, and eventually the board fills up, and you have to try and get rid of the different lines of shapes in order to free it up to be able to make more moves. It's a really interesting concept for a game, it plays really well, takes full advantage of the Game Boy Color, and it has an incredible soundtrack as well. Just listen to this. Another thing I really loved about this release on their website is the fact that you can choose what colour cartridge you actually want the game to be included on. So I got this nice clear one here, but there's loads of other options too. There's red, blue, purple, black, white, yellow, green, and of course this clear one as well. So no matter what your favourite colour, you can definitely find one to suit your taste. And I love that idea. I wish more people would do that as well. Now, these next three games are really interesting. These are Game Boy recreations of Digimon Virtual Pet games. They were made by a studio called Prodigious Pineapple, and he's done a really great job of recreating the Virtual Pet experience for the original Game Boy. So, if you want to leave your Game Boy on for a few hours and check back in on a little Digimon sprite and pick up his poo, then this is the game for you. From what I can tell, each three of them start off the same, but they end up evolving into different creatures later on in the game. So, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, check the website down below, they're actually still there for pre-order. They had all sold out, but it seems like he's getting some more back in stock. So if you're interested in a virtual pet style game made in Game Boy Studio, which is actually really impressive, like the amount of different options there are, and the way it actually understands what you're doing, and what sort of stats it's got and stuff, really impressive for the system. So if you want sort of a Tamagotchi experience, definitely check these three games out. This one is called The First Project, and I backed this one on Kickstarter a while ago, and it came in this really nice little cute box here, which is really cool. Really nice way of storing the game. I think that, along with the cassette tape one, are two of the more interesting ideas for storing the games without going for a full-fledged box and manual like these ones. So, the game itself, from what I've played so far, is a pretty standard Game Boy Studio game. It doesn't really push the envelope in any particular way, but it does seem like a nice interesting story. You basically land on this planet in the future and you have to try and get different minerals. And I've got about half an hour into the game and then I got stuck because I couldn't figure out the combination to continue. But the backgrounds look really nice. It seems like a very well thought out story. And if you'd be interested in me doing a full video on this game as well, let me know down in the comments below. Below, and I could always go back to it and play some more and come up with a full review if that's something you'd be interested in Otherwise, maybe I'll just play it on my own at some point But that is another one for you to look out for and I think it is getting a full release outside of the Kickstarter as well So don't worry if you're upset about missing out on it There is still a chance to get it once again check the description for a website link to get yourself a copy of the first project Which I think is being published very soon and now for a few download games. First up is a really cool platformer called Flying Arrows by Studio Loading. I've actually mentioned this one in the past, but he sent me over a brand new demo of the game to show off in this video with a load of improvements. So let's go and have a look and see what that's like. Okay, so here's an updated look at Flying Arrows for the Game Boy, this time playing it on the Super Game Boy because the devs made a new demo version which has Super Game Boy support and as you can already see, it has a fantastic nice border around the screen as well. And we're beginning in level one, which is the zoo. And another thing that the developer has improved since my feedback last time is actually changed the icon under the characters there to an actual speech mark instead of a down arrow. So. That's a lot better now. Um, and to speak to people you have to hold down and then press A, which takes a little bit of getting used to. This is something really cool about this game. You can actually use the arrows as platforms, which is really fun. You can just fly across the level like that, but you've got to stop here and get the key. So there's the key to the um, boss fight at the end of this level. And there's also lots of hidden secrets, like if you come down here and go through this door, Oh wow, that's new. So he's made this actually dark to look like a cave, which is really cool. Before it was just the the same sort of brightness as the rest of the level. And let's carry on and fight these snakes that show up. You can tell I've played this a few times now. Fight the rest of these snakes here. Easy. And then wait for this platform. 
I used to rush this section, and then I'd always end up in the spikes. The spikes actually move now as well, I don't think they moved before, so that's a nice little addition. And then if you go up here and use the arrow as a platform again, you can get to another one of those little secret areas. And if you hold left again, as far as I can tell from what I've played, at least in this version of the game, all the secret areas look the same, but hopefully in the final version they'll change, and then this one drops you here, and you can either go back there, which took you back to where you were, or you can carry on forward this way, and you'll soon end up at the boss room. So there's the boss, and if you pick the key up, you're allowed to go through. A black wolf owns the wrench I need to exit. Let's fight. I feel like some of the uh, writing in the cutscenes could be improved a little bit because the grammar isn't really that good at the minute. Beast, back to your cage, grr. And then we go and fight the beast. And um, this is where the demo ended. Yeah, and it still ended there, so demo complete. So let me know what you thought of this really quick demo. And if you want to scan that QR code there and try it for yourselves and follow him over on itch.io ready for when the final game's coming out, definitely go and do that. I'm really looking forward to the final game and I can't wait to share more with you in the future. Hope you enjoyed this little preview. Now, next up is a game by 7FH, who is a really well-renowned person in the community, and he is a programming genius. Just take a look at this. This is called G0, and it's improved a lot since the demo that I played before. This one now has three different courses and a selection of different cars that you can play as as well. It seems like one of the best racing games on the system and I really hope this one gets a full physical release in the future. It's definitely something very different and it's great to see people making these new original games. He was also working on another one called Gunship which is really cool as well so definitely go and check both of those games out. I'll put links to his itch.io page in the description where you can actually play both of these demos right now. Okay, so this one is a very unique and unexpected game for the Game Boy. This is a Game Boy version of the ever popular website, I was about to say app, but really it's a website called Wordle. So it'll be really interesting to see how this actually works on the Game Boy. So let's uh, start with... what letter should we start with? Probably a terrible starting word. Tiles. I'm not sure how the colour schemes work on this, so yellow means that it's not included. I don't know whether the red means that it's in the right place or if red means that it's the right letter but in the wrong place. I presume because it's yellow there that means it's in the right place so... Oh that's nice, you can press B to, to go back but it's not going to help me. Um, so I think that means there's, it starts with a T and it's got an O and an E in it then. Timmy, Timu, Timo. Timo is not a real word. Teams is a word, but I already used the S. What? Oh no, I was doing it wrong. So red means that it's the right letter in the wrong place, and blue means that it's the right letter in the right place. Okay, let's try again. Let's ignore that one. Let's start with another good opening. Party. So there's an R somewhere. Oh right, autofill means that the last letter goes directly onto the row below, so that's good. In some ways this is actually better than the official version of Wordle. Oh, okay, so... FEMA. Yay! There we go, guess 5 out of 6. Okay, and the final game we're looking at is one called In the Dark, which is actually up for pre-order right now on Bitmap Soft's website, so definitely go and check that out. And as for the game itself, it's a very simple puzzle game, but it's got some really good production values to it. So I'll quickly show you the prologue here because I was just blown away by the incredible artwork on display here. So not only is this a really, really polished game, there's also a lot of unlockables as well. So for example, there's all of these different colour palettes for all of these retro systems to unlock. And you can see there that if you complete a certain amount of levels, or if you complete a certain amount of levels under par or on par, then you can unlock all of these different extras. And then if I start right from the beginning, I'll give you a quick idea of what the game is like. And definitely go and check it out for yourselves. So it's basically a really simple puzzle game where you just have to switch off all the lights and 
It's not really anything that you've never seen before, but the way it's presented here is really well done, and the way that each puzzle is presented separately as well means that it's a game that you can pick up and play. It seems like a perfect game for the system. There's loads of different levels to it, like I said, loads to unlock, and incredible production values, but there's not really much more to say than that, but I definitely recommend it for the graphics alone, even if the gameplay is a little bit simple. Honestly, although it's a really good game, I'm really not very good at it. I'm definitely going to go back and finish some of these and like I said turn them into full reviews in the future. Let me know in the comments down below which game you thought looked the best out of all of these. If you want to see more Game Boy Homebrew videos check out the playlist up here where I've done so many videos now about so many incredible games made by so many incredibly talented developers, many of which are actually in my Discord so check the link in the description for an invite to that. That's it for this episode, thank you all so much, thank you to all of the Patreons going across the bottom of the screen right now and of course I'll see you all again very soon for another Game Boy Homebrew video. Goodbye!